Now the Knicks and Suns have both dropped six of their last ten games, but help me be on the way. Call Sean DePaul. The temperature is rising. The temperature. You know what I did right there. It's time for what's burning for all of the latest news from our own Ramona Shelburne. So Ramona, let's start with the guy that really helped turn the Knicks season around, OG Ananobi. Well, he has gone from out to questionable. So anytime you see a change on the injury report like that, makes you think a guy is getting really close to coming back. There is a chance he plays tonight. It's going to depend on how he feels during going through warm-ups, getting ready for this game. So it's not 100%, but there is a chance that he plays. Oh, so first time since February and having surgery on that elbow. So you're telling me there's a chance. Now sticking with the Knicks, what's the latest on Julius Randle? You know, he posted a video the other day on his Instagram of him shooting, and it says, it is what you think it is. Huh? <laughs> Which, you know, the sense I get is he's not all that close to returning. There's still optimism he can come back. But the fact that he posted a video of himself shooting, he's using his left hand, the shoulder's gonna, you gotta make sure he comes back and stays back. You don't wanna pop it out again, so you have to get back in shape conditioning-wise and make sure that it's stable, but that is a good update. And switching to the other side of the matchup, there are no names bigger than Joel Embiid. What can you tell us about his recovery? Well, he's not anywhere close right now to coming back, but he is able to get on the court and do some light work here. The hope that they have in Philly is that they can just stay in the mix for Joel Embiid to come back the last week or so of the season, at least, at least where he has a chance to get back some conditioning before the playoffs. Now, to stay in the mix, they will also need Tyrese Maxey. How about Joel's running mate? Well, he's back from his concussion. He feels great. Obviously, missed four games with that. And yeah, I, I texted with him this morning. He says, I feel great. I'm excited to be back. Don't worry about me. We're good to go. And I, and I think that's imp so important for them because, as we mentioned, they're sitting there at that sixth spot, one game away from the four and five spot. And this is a chance to gain some ground and build that cushion because you don't want to end up in the play-in tournament with a chance of Joel Embiid. Let's, let's dive in further. I like that because this is where the Eastern standings are as the Knicks and Sixers are each trying to make sure that they avoid the play-in at all costs. Both teams are currently in the playoffs. But with just over a month left to play, a lot can change. As Stephen A would say, the list could be fluid. Now, it's going to be an uphill battle, really, for either of these teams, the Knicks or the Sixers, to crack that top three. But that doesn't mean that they can't really make noise in the playoffs, right? So, Zach, what team do you think is the bigger wild card at this point in the season, Philly or New York? That whole thing is a five-car pileup on the highway. The whole thing is yeah. a wild card. I have no idea how the hell that's going to shake out. But if you're talking about wild card, like variance from floor to ceiling, it's got to be the Sixers yeah. because they have that one dude that was a combination of Shaq, Dirk, and Olajuwon all in one averaging 35 points a game, more than a point a minute before he got hurt. And we don't know when he's coming back. We don't know if he'll make it in time. We don't know what condition he'll be in when he comes back. But just that looming possibility of that guy being on a five, six, seven, eight seed, that's as wild a wild card as there is. And wild comp, Shaq, Dirk, Olajuwon yeah. for one, Joel Embiid. Are you on that same side with the Sixers being the wild card, Austin? Uh, I'm not wrong. I'm, I'm not mad at his answer, but I'm, I'm going to go with the Knicks, and here's why. You know, we ha at least have a timetable with Julius Randle coming back. You know, a timetable. At least we have some type of positivity. We really don't know what's going on with Joel Embiid. He's just now getting on the court. He's also a whole different size of a man in terms of weight and him getting on the court and actually being able to be back to himself. His tolerance, by the way, in terms of his toll on his body and what he has to go through, I think is even more than what Julius has. You know, the Knicks, I think, are a better put together about role players. And, and, and this is a team that we were talking about contending and title contending a couple months ago prior to the injuries. Now the addition of their new players, you have Julius back in the picture. If he is able to come back, that is not a team you'd want to play early on. You're hoping they can hang on and contend because it's good for basketball when the Knicks are good. Where's Rick Pitino, okay? <laughs> Where is he? Because Joel Embiid might be walking through that door, as Jack said. I mean, as Zach said. I mean that, to me, that is the biggest one. That's the MVP that's sitting out there who might be walking through that door. But Ramona, they're on two different timelines. I, I do think that health might make the Sixers feel like they should push that, for that, the future. That, but Zach? Look, that, oh, well, it's, it's fine. You can make a if point. If Joel Embiid, the MVP, can come back this season, and I know the, the Sixers <laughs> have optimism that 
He, if, they, if they're in it, if his knee responds well, if his ramp up goes well, there's a lot of ifs, okay? But he's still Joel Embiid. He still could walk through that door. There's no bigger game changer out there for any team than the reigning MVP who could come back for the Philadelphia 76ers. Getting Tyrese Maxey back is huge. He's the, they, they held down the fort without him, but they really need him, and he's recovered well from this concussion. He's going to play. Yeah. But I, I, I know what you're saying, Austin, about the Knicks. They, they look like a team that could go to the conference finals when they had all those guys healthy for a couple of games, right? They went, It was only a few games that they yeah. were all healthy. But – Nobody is as big of a difference maker as Joel Embiid. But look at these numbers because I tried to toss it to Zach and I wanted him to talk nerdy to you, but instead <laughs> I'll just do it myself. Look right here. Those numbers, they have struggled as of late. Look at points per game, 102 to 99. Like these are two teams that desperately need their stars. 42%. They're almost having that Spider-Man. What is it, GIF, that, that emoji? Like yeah. they're both on the struggle <laughs> bus, but my answer are the Knicks just because the timeline benefits them right now in the moment potentially moving forward. Time for a little chop it or drop. It. I'll throw you all a topic, and you can decide if you, we need to chop it up or drop it and move on. Y'all got okay. the rules, right? Yep. Starting with Milwaukee in Sunday's win over the Clippers, Dame and Giannis became just the third duo in the last 50 years to each post 30 points, Ooh. 10 assists in the same game. Plus, Chris Middleton, who hasn't played since before the trade deadline, is nearing his return. So, Ramona, the Bucks are hitting their stride. Chop it or drop it. Yeah, we'll chop it just a little bit because, as Doc Rivers was telling me before the game the other night, he's really working on that two-man game between Dame and Giannis. Before this, they were kind of trading off. Now they're playing together. They know how much they need each other and how much the other helps them to get better. Chris Middleton had been upgraded from que to questionable, now back downgraded again. So he's near his return, but not quite there yet. Zach, are you buying the Bucks being better? I am buying them. The two-man chemistry between Dame and Giannis is coming along. And look, if you have Giannis and you have Dame, you have a chance. Chris Middleton, biggest wild card in the league. They need him fully healthy to have any shot to get through Boston in the playoffs. If they have that, they got a puncher's chance at least. Let's go from east to now west. Next up, the New Orleans Pelicans, who have the NBA's longest active win streak at four <laughs> games. It's all right. Four straight dubs. Zach Lowe, earlier this season, you called the Pels a sleeping giant in the west, and they were also the main character of your wildly successful podcast. Can the Pels make some noise come playoff time? Chop it or drop it? Yeah, the Giant is starting to wake up a little bit. Someone hit it on the head. It's stirring in bed. It's trying to get hungry. <laughs> this is the best the Pelicans have ever played in the Zion Williamson era. Yep. The rhythm is there. The defensive effort up and down the roster are there. The vibes are good in New Orleans. Herb Jones Jr. and Trey Murphy III yep. have kind of unlocked that team. Do not sleep on the Pelicans. They are a problem right now. Okay, uh, Austin, do you think that the vibes are immaculate in New Orleans? <laughs> yeah, I got to chop it. Uh, the playoffs, the game always slows down. It becomes a possession by possession game. Defense becomes a little bit physical. I love the length and size of the Pelicans. We talk about Herb Jones, Trey Murphy, Brandon Ingram, Zion Williams. These guys are all 6'8", 6'9", 6'10". They are going to be a problem in the playoffs, not to mention what they can do in the offensive end. And we're, we haven't even thrown in C.J. McCollum in that mix. They're definitely a team to look out for in the playoffs. The way that you just described the Pelicans, you can sort of make the same argument for the Cavs because after missing his seventh straight game on Monday, Donovan Mitchell has now failed to play in 18 contests. They will really need him back to make that post season push, making him ineligible for any postseason awards, including all NBA. Now, Donovan Mitchell is just the latest of notable names that won't be able to hit that 65 game threshold. He joins Joel Embiid, Jimmy Butler, Draymond Green, Kyrie Irving, and Chris Stapps Porzingis. You can see the list right there amongst those players that have failed probably projectedly to make that that situation. So Austin, is the new rule going According to plan, you know, the NBA Institute's 65 games, these guys are ineligible. Do you want to chop this or do you want to drop it? Chop it. I mean, listen, cause and effect. Of course, there's always going to be a downside to new things coming about, new rules being placed in. But look at what's happening in L.A., man. We got Kawhi Leonard playing games. We have Paul George out there <laughs> healthy. We have a, a number of guys who are historically injured playing multiple games and yes that could be the timing of these guys just bodies feeling healthy who knows 
but I, I like this rule being in place. It is a tough one because some of these guys are going to be out, you know, making NBA teams and awards, but that's just what it is. I think for the long benefit of the game, you're going to have multiple guys play through the little knickknack injuries that they could easily play the, or what you would see typically in the 90s, early 2000s guys playing. We're now going to see these guys play. And listen, you have fans coming to games. You want to see the stars play. I like the rule. Get these guys on the court. Go out there and play. Yeah, no uh, Persing is based off of what we saw with that, but there's been no problem really in Boston because the Celtics became the first team to 50 wins this season, reaching the mark in 64 games, their fewest since 2007-2008 when they won the championship. So, Ramona, chop it or drop it. Boston being the first team to hit the 50 We're wins drop matters. It. It's all about June for this team. It's not about how many wins they get in the regular season. They got to win to make to win, make this season a success. So, if we're going to drop it, how about this? The NBA on Sunday find minute Minnesota Timberwolves center Rudy Gobert $100,000 $100, for making a money gesture at an official and criticizing officiating on Friday night. Now, after the OT loss, you can see it right there. Gobert didn't deny what he did and went further in saying that sports betting could be having a major impact on the outcome of games. Ramona, Ooh. how big of an issue is this? And this is why we saw the high level of the fine. Oh, I was in a way almost surprised that he didn't get games for this because of how important the gambling association is for the NBA for all professional sports this has become a huge story in all the sports and for somebody to publicly question and not just with a gesture but with his words afterwards is very unsettling for the NBA and anyone in professional sports yeah they're trying to dissuade that in the NBA which is why we saw a very hefty sign now